Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about a bunch of manga that will be coming out through December of 2024. Now these are not all the new manga that are coming out in the next few months. These are just ones that I personally am probably going to pick up and I'm also going to be mentioning some final volumes that I'm looking forward to. For any new stuff, I decided to go ahead and read the synopsis with you to maybe pique some interest on some of these because some of them I saw the cover and heard a little bit about it when it was announced, but at this point I can't remember what it's about. I just know I want to pick it up. And as always, anytime I do a video like this, I do have to mention that the release dates are probably going to change for some of these. I have quite a few manga from indie publishers or smaller publishers or publishers that just delay their manga a lot. So if you're watching this video later on in the future and some of the release dates are different, that's why. And the first one I want to talk about is one of those. This one has been delayed at least six months. I want to say it's been delayed maybe 10 months at this point, but that is Gannibal Volume 1. At this point, the release date is July 2nd, and since we're getting pretty close to that, I don't think they'll delay it anymore, but we'll see. I backed the Kickstarter for the entire like hardcover release of all the volumes. That's supposed to come out in October, but I really doubt that at this point. But anyway, they keep sending me emails of like reviews of the first volume for months. They've been doing this months and months and I don't know, they haven't released the first volume. But anyway, let's read what it's about, shall we? So this says, after the mysterious disappearance of a countryside cop, the role is reassigned to officer Daigo Agawa. He finds the remote village quaint and he looks forward to an easygoing post among the warm and welcome welcoming citizenry. Then he gets a call. The body of a local grandmother has been found. The scene immediately sows doubt for the young policeman. A human bite mark has been left on the corpse, and any voice suspicion of Agawa's is met with a strange, sudden, and intense hostility. Something dark is lurking under the idyllic facade of the charming mountain village, but can Officer Agawa spare himself and his family from it? And it says that there's a TV show for the series on Hulu. I don't know, I haven't watched it. But of course, I love horror manga. In fact, many of the series I'm going to be mentioning in this video are horror manga, because those are the ones I'm most excited about. But this one about cannibals, I've been reading a lot of cannibal books recently, and this one is no different. I've seen a couple different panels of the art. It looks really cool, and I'm very excited for it. Next on July 9th is H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness by Gotenabe. This is a one of those like hardcover deluxe editions from Dark Horse. I think I've read one of these Gotenabe horror manga that are adaptations of like classic tales, and I didn't really enjoy it but in this big giant version, I think I will like it because my issue was it was a really small book and it was a very detailed art, so it was hard to see all the detail and scary stuff. So I think this will be the perfect format for something like this. So I'm going to read the synopsis of this one as well. In 1931, an expedition team arrives at a campsite in Antarctica to find its crew of men and sled dogs strewn and dead. Some are hideously mangled as if enraged. Some have been dissected in a curious and cold-blooded manner. One man is missing, but a still more horrific sight is a star-shaped mound of snow nearby, for under its five points is another mass grave, and what lies there is not remotely human. That sounds fun. At the Mountains of Madness is a journey into the core of Lovecraft's mythos, into the deep caverns and even deeper time of the dead continent where the secret history of our planet is preserved. Since it was first published in Astounding Stories during the classic pulp era, At the Mountains of Madness has influenced both horror and science fiction worldwide. Then it's got some blurb from Junji Ito, which is unsurprising, but this one definitely sounds up my alley, so I'm going to be picking that up as well. This next one is one I'm a little bit on the fence about because it is kind of a romance manga, but it also explores gender identity, which are usually series I enjoy reading. So this one is called Just Like Mona Lisa, and the first volume is coming out on July 16th. So it says, in this world, people are born without a gender. Then children's bodies shift toward their desired gender when they reach 12 years old. Until Hinase's 18th spring, they lived content without a gender, but bubbly girl Ritsu and thoughtful boy Shiori both confessed their feelings on the same day. Romance was never on Hinase's mind, so how can they respond? Hinase must explore their identity as they arrive at the cusp of adulthood. Who will they choose and who will they become? So I think if it's more of a coming of age manga, I will enjoy it as opposed to a love triangle type thing. But this is one, I'll go ahead and try the first volume. There are quite a few of these volumes already up for pre-order, so I imagine the release dates will be pretty quick, but we'll see. Then on July 23rd is the final volume of Delicious in Dungeon, volume 14. I feel like I've been talking about this series in every single one of my videos, 
the last few months, but I've been really loving it. Volume 14 is the final one, so then I will finish up the series. Next, also on July 23rd, this manga is called Search and Destroy. This is volume one of three, I believe, and this is put out by Fantagraphics. They do pretty much all the Moto Hagia works that I have, and so I really enjoy their releases, and this one sounds pretty cool. It's based on Osamu Tezuka works. I think it's a reimagining of Dororo, so let's read it. It says, this is a tale of rage. Rage against hypocrisy, injustice, exploitation, and the wrongs done to a child who grew into a righteous killer. Complete in three volumes, Search and Destroy transplants the vengeful action of Dororo from feudal Japan into a dystopian future where, where mercenary robots known as creatures serve the human elite and victimize the city's scrabbling, desperate masses. The violent death of one of these creatures connects an orphan thief named Doro with a mysterious girl in a stinking animal hide that conceals deadly cybernetic implants. Implants. Who is this mysterious girl? How is she killing one by one the city's most twisted and powerful creatures? So two words I heard in that synopsis that make me definitely want to pick it up. One, dystopian. Two, robots. We all know it. Then also on July 23rd is the re-release of Tayo Matsumoto's Go Go Monster, which has been out of print for a long time. I don't know if this is just a reprint or they're actually doing something new with it like they did with Tech on Kingcrete not that long ago, but this one has a short synopsis, so we'll read this one as well. It says, a haunting and poetic vision of one boy's imagination. Third grader Yuki Tachibana lives in two worlds. In one, he's a loner ridiculed by his classmates and reprimanded by his teachers for telling stories of supernatural beings that only he can see. In the other, those supernatural beings vie for power with malevolent spirits who bring chaos into the school, the students' lives, and the nature itself. So I've enjoyed pretty much all the Taiyo Matsumoto works that I've read so far, and this is one I've always wanted to pick up, but it's been out of print and expensive, so I haven't had the chance. So this is a great opportunity to read another of his works. Also on July 23rd is the third and final omnibus of King in Limbo, which I'm so excited for. I loved the first omnibus. I haven't read the second one yet. I was holding off until the series is complete, and it will be very soon. And finally, also on July 23rd, is Ali by Junji Ito. This is another one of his short story collections. I'm not going to read the synopsis because it's Junji Ito. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to be picking it up. I do like the cover of this one though. Then moving into August, on the 6th of August, we have the final volume of Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko, which I'm actually not excited for. I'm excited that I don't have to pick this up anymore and read it. <laughs> I'm not loving this series. I know many, many people are, which is fantastic. It is not my favorite series though. I am excited that it will be over. Also on August 6th is another new series. This one is called The Strange House. It's another horror manga. Interestingly, this synopsis is told in first person, so let me read it. I've always had a fascination with the occult. You might even call it my specialty. I've been brought in as consultant on many supernatural and strange mysteries, but nothing could have prepared me for this house. It seemed so ordinary at first, except for that one room. It had no doors, no windows, and was tucked away, leaving anyone to think it was just a wall. I knew that there was something more to it. It shouldn't be there, it shouldn't exist. And yet, just what is this house and what dark secrets does it hold? That's pretty much the whole synopsis. It says something about it being based on a novel, which sometimes manga adaptations of novels are not that great. So we'll see how this one goes. I believe it's put out by Seven Seas. Moving to August 20th, we have the final volume seven of Welcome Back, Alice a series that I am enjoying, even though many people don't. I think it's very interesting, so I'm looking forward to the final volume. And also on August 20th is the final volume of Glitch. This is volume four. I've only read the first volume of this, but I enjoyed it. It's a pretty interesting mystery manga where reality is glitching out, as the title would suggest. That was everything for August, so now let's move into September. On September 10th, we have Tomorrow the Birds. This is a short story collection by Osama Tezuka. I really like the cover of this. It looks pretty cool. It's also published by Ablaze, so it'll probably get delayed inevitably. It's already been delayed several times, but whenever it gets released, I'll be picking it up. Then on September 15th is a manga put out by Last Gasp, which is another indie publisher. I have a couple works from them. They publish The Strange Tale of Panorama Island, which I really, really enjoy. But this one is by Keiichi Koike. I read a work by him and it was something. <laughs> uh, but this one I imagine will be similar. 
So this one is called Ultra Heaven, if I didn't say that. The synopsis says, in the future, any mood you want is just a pump away. People flock to legal pump bars where licensed medical professionals known as bar doctors prescribe their customers the perfect pharmaceutical blend. But when the standard dosage isn't enough, our protagonist, Cub, turns to an unauthorized source. The results have to be seen to be believed. Rendered in a richly detailed, clear line style, this psychedelic sci-fi manga tears apart the basic fabric of reality. What is the truth and what is a dream? So that sounds pretty similar to the last work by this author that I read very much about drugs and weird psychedelic things. So I'll pick it up. It's volume one, so not a one shot. I'm not sure how many volumes it will be, but I'll give it a try. Then on September 17th is Trillion Game volume one. This is a Viz release. So this one, it says, self-proclaimed world's greediest man Haru and timid computer whiz Gaku set out to make a trillion dollars. They start the company Trillion Game to accomplish this task and hope to iron out the details as they go. With charm, technical skills, and no business plan, can these unlikely friends reach their lofty goal? After Haru and Gaku become the first Japanese people in the 21st century to be listed among the world's top 10 billionaires, Gaku reflects on when he and Haru met and the events that led to the founding of their company. What started as a middle school acquaintanceship builds to a fruitful and unorthodox partnership as the two progress on their ruthless path, path to success. So I'm not sure if this series is complete in Japan or not, but that sounds pretty interesting, so I'll give that one a try as well. Then also on September 17th is the highly anticipated final volume of Blood on the Tracks, volume 17. I don't need to say anything about the series. I'm loving this second part. I know some people are not, but it's definitely for me. I'm really enjoying it, so I can't wait to see how it ends. Then this one I almost didn't even want to mention in this video because there's no way it's actually coming out on September 24th like it says it is. It'll probably get delayed another two years. It's already been delayed over two years. This is They Were 11, put out by Denpa. It's a release by Motohagio, so I will pick it up whenever it gets released. There's no way it's getting released on September 24th. I would doubt it even gets released in this year. So I wasn't gonna include it in this video, but I am looking forward to it, so whatever. Next is another manga put out by an indie publisher. This one is Living the Line, who has released Her Frankenstein, which I did recently read and I really enjoyed it. So this one will come out on October 1st. It's called UFO Mushroom Invasion. So it looks like this one was originally released in 1976. I really, really enjoy reading older sci-fi horror manga and that's what this seems to be. So it says, a flying saucer crashes deep in the mountains of Japan. Wary of the hyper-intelligent beings they find inside, the government hides from the public all news of the alien craft. But it's not the strange visitors themselves that they should be afraid of. The real danger is the parasitic spores smuggled aboard. Will Earth survive the UFO mushroom invasion? So not only have I been reading quite a few books about cannibals recently, I've also been reading books about like sentient mushrooms. Not on purpose, it was an accident, but this seems like it will be similar to that. So another one I will definitely be picking up. Next on October 15th is another Junji Ito release. This one is not a manga though. This seems to be an essay or something like that. It's called Uncanny, The Origins of Fear. So in this, he's basically talking about his influences, analyzing his own work and his storytelling, and talking about how he became a manga artist, I believe. And so as a fan of both Junji Ito and just horror manga in general, this is one I will definitely be picking up. Also on October 15th is the Red River Omnibus. So this is a series that I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy, but I am going to try it out with this omnibus. I'm not gonna read the synopsis because it's Red River. I feel like many people know what Red River is, but I am looking forward to giving it a try. I'm glad that Viz decided to re-release it in this new edition so people who really, really want to collect it have the opportunity to do so. Next, also on October 15th is something a little bit different. This is actually a novel but it's called Run With The Wind. And if that name sounds familiar, a couple years ago, there was an anime that is actually based on this novel. So this is the first time the novel will have been released in English. So I really, really enjoyed that anime. It's a really, really fun running anime, pretty emotional as well. So I'd like to compare it to the novel and see how it goes. It also takes place in college if you're looking for something a little bit different from many high school sports manga and anime that are out there. Then on October 22nd, just in time for Halloween, is the final volume eight of the Parasite Full Color Collection. I've been waiting until this volume is released to read the entire thing. I've never read Parasite. I've been collecting the volumes though, so I'm ready to read it in spooky month. Next on October 29th is another re-release. 
This is Drifters. This is by the same author as Helsing, which I really, really enjoyed. I believe this manga is on hiatus in Japan and has been on hiatus for a long time though. So we'll see. But this is the omnibus version if I didn't mention that. I will read the synopsis for you. This says, Warriors and warlords from Earth's history, drifters, are transported to an alien world and employed to help the non-human races defend themselves in a worldwide civil war with legions of monsters led by the malefic Black King threatening the annihilation of both human and non-human races. That was a long sentence. <laughs> Drifters is a howling tornado of all-out action and staggering imagination. This sounds like it might be similar to Helsing in that it's very action-packed, a lot of really cool, like, gross horror scenes. Not a huge amount of depth, but it should be fun, so I'll give that a try as well. Moving into November, on the 12th, we have the final volume of Yamotsu Hegui, The Tree of Death. This is volume three. I really enjoyed the first volume of this, and I can't wait to see how it all wraps up. I am a little wary because it felt like it should have been a longer series than three volumes, but we'll see. Also on November 12th is Wanted. This is a collection of short stories that the author of One Piece did before he did One Piece. I actually have the Japanese version of this manga. I bought it many years ago. I obviously can't read it, but I am excited to finally be able to read these stories. I believe there is also an anime adaptation of one or all of these stories. I haven't watched that, but maybe I will after reading this. On November 19th, we have the final omnibus of Innocent. So this is one that scares me because it's really gross. <laughs> there aren't many manga that can make me physically feel sick, and this one did, but I'm kind of impressed by that, so I'm interested to read the rest of the omnibuses, and then we'll see if the sequel series gets licensed as well by Dark Horse. I'm not sure. They didn't end up licensing The Climber or Viz beat them out for it, so we'll see. On November 19th is another newly released Viz series. So this one is called After God. 30 years after the gods reduced Tokyo to rubble, survivors set out to answer a seemingly impossible question. How do you kill a god? Japan has been invaded by gods, and they've left nothing but death and destruction in their wake. With entire cities now classified as uninhabitable danger zones, anti-god researcher Sachiyuki Tokinaga is determined to find a way to take down the gods and save humanity. When chance leads him to high schooler Waka Kamikura, the two may just end up changing the fate of the world forever. Desperate for answers about her friend's disappearance, Waka breaches the Tokyo danger zone in search of clues. Instead, she finds Tokinaga, a researcher with the anti-god science institute. While Waka tries to decide if she should trust Tokinaga, he quickly realizes Waka is hiding a dangerous secret of her own, one that may just be the key to killing off the gods once and for all. So this sounds like it could be cool. It also sounds like it could be just another monster fighting manga. So hopefully it's actually cool and not too similar to many other series that I've been reading recently, but I am looking forward to trying it out. And moving into December, we have a spin-off manga of a series I really enjoy. This is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Shining Diamond's Demonic Heartbreak. So the only problem I have with this is that it seems to be from the price points, just a typical Shonen Jump style release, which does not match other Jojo's manga. I don't have all of them. In fact, I don't have many of them. I just have the Rohan spin-off manga. I was hoping it would match that, but it's not going to. I'm not gonna read the synopsis because it has spoilers for Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, but I guess this will hold me over until they finally release part seven physically. So looking forward to that. Then on December 17th, we have the final omnibus of Orb on the movements of the earth. I have decided to wait until this final omnibus is over and then read the entire series again. This manga is very unique, not something I've really seen before in the medium. So I'm looking forward to see how it ends. Then also on December 17th is Confession. I believe this is a one shot. It doesn't say that it's a series. So this says that Confession is a deeply psychological thriller manga that examines how quickly unexpected vulnerability and the threat of an uncertain future can make men descend into madness. A few miles up in the unforgiving heights of Mount Awari, hikers and friends Asai and Ishikura are hit by a blizzard and lose their way. Injured and sure of his imminent death, Ishikura confesses to killing a member of their university hiking club five years ago. However, Asai then stumbles upon shelter and carries them both to safety, only to realize that the confession has forever changed their relationship, and that the brutal elements may no longer be the most deadly threat around. That sounds like something that I will definitely be buying, especially since it's just a one-shot, that sounds like something I need to be reading, so I will do so. And finally, on Christmas Eve, we have the first hardcover omnibus of Ashita no Jo, Fighting for Tomorrow. This is put out by Kodansha, or Vertical in this case, I suppose. But this is going to be one of those oversized hardcover volumes, which I actually don't really like. They're very difficult to read, but 
if this is the only way we're going to be able to get this manga, then it's okay. I'm going to read the synopsis for you as well. A young drifter named Joe Yabuki wanders through the slums of Tokyo, but when the local ruffians try to give him a hard time, he teaches them a rough lesson with his fists. The spectacle sparks a gleam in the eye of an old drunk who happens to be watching, Danpei Tange, a failed boxer and former coach who sees something special in the boy. He pleads with Joe to train with him, but the cocky young fighter brushes him off. Later, though, when Joe is arrested and put in a juvenile detention facility, he realizes that he's going to need to hone his raw fighting skills if he wants to survive. Thus is born a partnership that might just take Joe all the way to the top. So this is the classic boxing manga, and I actually don't tend to love like boxing, fighting manga, even though they are sports manga, but I do want to give this one a try because it is so highly acclaimed. So yeah, that was everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I'm sure I missed some things. So if you have any new releases that are coming out before the end of the year and you want to talk about them, please leave those comments down below. I'd love to hear what you're excited about, but that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.